Robert Brown on YouTube. He's got a few questions, and I'm going to uh, clump three of them together right here. How fast can you crash your beer? One degree per hour, three degrees per day. There's a lot of different opinions on this, and I have done the following. With ales, I typically ferment around 68 degrees. Toward the tail end of fermentation, I will turn it up to 71 degrees to help it finish out. And then uh, I will pressurize the tank and I will drop it to 33 degrees when uh, when it's past BDK and every and past sensory um, and it's stable for multiple days. That's what I do. And I just crash it straight down to 33 and it'll happen overnight. I know there are some people uh, I do the same thing with lagers by and large. I've done a, a lot of different things with lagers. But the classic thing I would do is ferment at 50, allow it to ramp up a little bit, and then uh, crash it straight down. Um, but even with my lagers, I will crash them from the, the the high point of their fermentation temperature all the way down. I have stepped that down. My lab is not good enough. <laughs> I don't have enough time or the expertise to really be able to track the impact um, that this has on future generations of yeast. I do not feel as if I'm getting negative qualities in these beers from the fast crash uh, because there's one argument that says you want to get that yeast off of the beer as fast as possible. There's another argument that says that you can shock that yeast and that yeast will start to re uh, expel um, some flavors and aromas that you may not want in your beer. I can see both cases for it. And I think I'm going to need more at my disposal uh, before I can give like a really good answer for that. I have done both. Just recently, I babied uh, the crash on a pills a little bit. But yeah, I don't know. I do, I do a straight crash with those beers. Robert continues, how long does the beer really need to sit to clean up before crashing? That's one of the reasons I raised the temperature uh, of those ferments toward the end because as as that temperature increases, it can help to encourage the yeast uh, to stay active in, in reabsorbing um, uh, some things that, you know, the cleanup phase, the cleanup portion of fermentation when all sugar has been consumed and then the yeasts are just re reconsuming things like uh, diacetyl, uh, potentially acetaldehyde, green apple um, that might be cleaning up. That's kind of what we're what we're referencing. Um, how long does the beer really need to sit and clean up? That can be based on uh, yeast strain uh, temperature. I would find what is good for you. This is where you need to start. Uh, you need good palates around you, or you need to develop your palate. Okay, be running a VDK test. I've done videos on that diacetyl test. Get very familiar with what uh, acetaldehyde green apple smells like. Um, also, uh, really work on diacetyl, other things like that. Um, and because it's going to be your palate, your old factory, your olfactory, your sensory that is going to make the the to let you know. Once that beer hits terminal and is stable for two days, I'm I'm really hardcore testing. I'm making sure that I'm I'm making sure that I'm past butter and everything else like that, past BDK. Uh, so that would be my recommendation there, Robert. Uh, his next question was: Are ales required to condition at the same temp as for lagers, one zero to one degree Celsius? Um, required? I mean, it's a great idea. And it's a great idea because what it's going to do is it's going to help get solids out of solution. And it's also going to force particulate to the, the lower, the, at the lower temperature, those particles will stick together a little bit more, get larger and fall out. So it, it will make a smoother beer. If you do have time to get your ales really, really cold for a period of time, do it for as long as you can. If you're, if you're brewing professionally, um, as long as you can afford to, right? And you're going to hit some diminishing returns, but but do try to get yourself some some good quality uh, cold time in there. Um, obviously, we all know the extended lagering time and 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 process. You know, being between. 
four to six to seven weeks, depending on what you're doing there. So yeah, I, I think that's uh, I, I think those are those are some of the things um, that help with this kind of conditioning and crashing phase of the brewing process. Thank you for the question, Robert Brown. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're gonna maybe be over here or over here. Appreciate you watching.